Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. With no shortage of economic news, it's time for the return of our monthly expert panel. Joining us today are the former Finance and Natural Resources Minister for Canada, the Honourable Joe Oliver. As well, we have Sandra Pupatello, who was the Economic Development Minister and Trade Minister in Ontario. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, momentous day, uh, uh, Joe and Sandra. We've got uh, this 0.75% uh, rate hike in the interest rates from the Bank, Bank of Canada. I'd love to get your perspective, uh, both of your perspectives on that, but also a more general perspective. We're heading into the fall now. Uh, how you see the general economic climate for Canada. Joe, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, the market certainly expected the 75 basis point increase. There was a small number who thought it might have been as high as a full point and, and a lesser uh, group who thought it might be only half a point. But this, is, this was the, uh, the overwhelming uh, consensus, I guess, amongst the economics, uh, econ economists and market observers. And uh, um, it's an indication that uh, the, the Bank of Canada, somewhat belatedly, um, is pretty determined uh, to, to deal with inflation. Inflation has come down a, a little bit, but uh, the underlying uh, issues uh, aren't, aren't going away, and no one thinks that inflation is going to come down to the 2% uh, target uh, level uh, anytime soon. So there's a lot of work that the central banks are going to have to do. Um, you, you look to the United States, which, of course, has a profound impact on, on Canada's economy, and there are a lot of Fed watchers who, who believe that Jerome Powell uh, might weaken uh, for, for political reasons. He doesn't have the, the, the stomach uh, to create or exacerbate, I should say, a recession in the United States. Uh, but his, his recent uh, talk in, in Jackson Hole uh, would indicate that he's looking uh, more at Paul Volcker uh, than any of his other uh, predecessors. And as we recall, Volcker was the one who, who, who really pushed uh, rates up and actually caused a, a, a pretty bad uh, recession because he was determined to deal with with inflation, which is the primary goal of, of central bankers, uh, including, of course, here in, in Canada. So that's that's uh, one big issue. Uh, the other the other issue is that uh, the economy is is. Um, you know, the raw numbers are are not nearly as bad as the United States, which has had two uh, negative quarters is is technically in a recession and is a, is about, uh, I think, to get into a worse one. So uh, can Canada uh, be far, far behind? Uh, the, the employment numbers uh, seem to be uh, pretty good at, uh, at a superficial level, but but the vast majority of the, of the employment came from the public sector. And that, of course, is, is unsustainable. And in any case, uh, it doesn't really um, produce the kind of economic growth that, that we need because it, it, for, it isn't producing anything and it, uh, it requires additional uh, public right. uh, you know what yeah sorry, sorry I was just gonna uh, we've got about a, a minute 30 before we get our break so I wanted to make sure Sandra had a chance to give her assessment of where we're at uh, this fall well, I just think, you know, come the fall, uh, you like to think a lot of the harvest is coming in. So some of our grocery prices will improve. Uh, that that happens naturally in the fall where you're not paying the, you know, outrageous prices for fruit uh, that you pay in the fall, in the spring and the, and the winter. Um, you know, the housing uh, starts have fallen, the housing prices have fallen, the housing sales have fallen. And it seems like that's a pretty dramatic impact uh, from the last hike in interest rate. So I was kind of questioning, did we really need this one? Um, energy prices are going to continue to go up or to be unstable as long as we've got these issues with Russia and Ukraine. And, and you know, I only wish that we were more aggressive earlier on against Russia, frankly, so that we could solve some of this problem a little more quickly, because these are not going to be short term solutions. Um, and if we think we've got it bad, all I can say is I'm glad we're not in Europe because it's worse. That doesn't make us feel any better when we're paying at the pump or paying at the grocery store. Uh, so I'm a little afraid that this next one is really going to send a kind of message um, that impacts the psyche of Canadians. Uh, the, the biggest issue, frankly, in industry is that I think our, our, our labor 
situation would be better if we could find people to hire. And I wish we had as much aggressive behavior by regulators on immigration rules, for example, that could, you know, jumpstart some of our labor issues, uh, like we're getting on monetary policy. Okay, we're going to leave it at that for the first segment. Thanks uh, to both of you. We'll see you back after these messages. Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with the Honorable Joe Oliver and Sandra Pupatello as we discuss the state of the economy in Canada. Uh, I'm going to go back to last month, uh, Joe and Sandra, and talk a little bit about some of the commentary that followed the visit by German Chancellor Schultz to Canada. Uh, was there a big opportunity missed it to be a natural gas supplier and help a friend in need? Uh, Joe, I'll go to you first. Well, to ask the question is to answer it. Um, you know, th this, this particular visit uh, highlighted a, a profound mistake that this government has, has is relentlessly pursued, which is to be hostile to uh, Canada's immense natural resources and block any chance to, uh, uh, to move our resources or almost any chance to move our resources to tidewater and onto uh, offshore markets. So uh, here we, we have a situation where uh, there was an opportunity to earn tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars and help our allies in, in dire need, uh, but we simply can't deliver. And furthermore, this government uh, has no uh, desire or intention uh, to do that. I mean, they talked about some, uh, you know, some fanciful ideas about, about hydrogen. I mean, uh, you know, maybe someday that, that will help uh, somewhat, but that's not what, uh, what Germany needs right now. Germany is, is in a crisis. Um, and uh, the German economy, the biggest in, in Europe, is, is going to uh, be hit with a, with a very, bad, uh, very bad economic downturn. Uh, energy prices are, are up, uh, I don't know, more than double, maybe, maybe even triple like in, in the UK. And um, uh, they're facing a, a, a terrible winter where people are going to have to choose between, uh, uh, between uh, food and heat. Um, so what what Germany needed what uh, was was obvious they needed the natural gas now to uh, uh, to substitute for the, the the gas that they're they're losing uh, from from Russia. Meanwhile, they're they're rushing to uh, to open up coal plants. Uh, they're trying to import uh, coal from um, uh, from Russia uh, and greenhouse gas emissions are, are, are going way up so so our policies have hurt the environment as well as Canada's national interests and the interest of our allies you know it's, it's really you, Tony I just have to jump in because it's not fair Joe not to mention that part of their crises is of their own making because at the same time they are shutting down their own nuclear plants as we speak which are completely green uh, and a decision that they made that they've decided not to reverse. So their own supply of, of consistent green energy, uh, just like we have here in Ontario with 50% of our base of energy coming from nuclear, uh, which allows us to shut down our coal plants, for example, uh, they've yep. made a decision to shut down green and are looking for fossil fuel base. Now, I'm not suggesting that Canada shouldn't still be in the business of natural gas. I think we should be because it is still better than a lot of the oils that are being used around the world. So it's like the lesser of two evils. So, yes, I believe we should still be talking about it. I'm not the energy minister. I know you were. Um, but I do think that Germany really shot themselves in both feet while they've got a crisis on the go. So it's, it's not fair not to mention that, Joe. Well, I just didn't have time. I had mentioned it. Oh, because you that, were about to say something well, other than it's the government's fault. <laughs> no, no, no. Just a sec. I, I mentioned that uh, repeatedly on on this this show. I think that Angela Merkel made a, a strategic error, um, a monumental error, and and. That, no, the current I, government's been around for over a year and they have not reversed that decision. So uh, in fairness, I think they do have to clean up their own messes as well. well yeah, I don't Joe, know what, uh, Joe, you've got the floor, yeah. Okay, the well, with the fairness is, just, just, just uh, say. Hydrogen oh, oh. may be a solution. Yeah. Sandra, uh, Joe's got the floor, yeah. Okay, 
First of all, I agree completely that, that Germany brought this problem on themselves, and so did the rest of Europe by relying on intermittent green energy uh, rather than, um, than, than fossil fuels, which, which provide baseload, and um, a nuclear, uh, which, uh, which you mentioned it's 50% it's, it's in Ontario. Actually, it's 60% in, in Ontario, and we have one of the, the cleanest uh, energy, uh, electricity energy uh, production uh, systems in the entire world. Um, but, uh, you, you know, the, the, the reality that, that uh, Germany is facing, which is to a large extent their own, um, nevertheless could be alleviated uh, by Canada uh, to our economic advantage, and, and unfortunately that didn't happen. On that note, we do have to take another break. Sandra, go back to you. This is a great discussion we're having about uh, Canada's future here. Uh, do, you, do you think, Sandra, that the Canada does still have a future to export fossil fuels? Well, my view is yes, because I think, uh, for one thing, our oil sands have improved vastly over the years and how they're getting materials out of the ground in, in a much cleaner fashion. It's certainly, it, around natural gas especially, there's a whole reason that we are still promoting some pipelines, and I think we still need them. Uh, and natural gas is better than oil. In, in a whole bunch of uh, uh, areas in the north, for example, they are still heating homes with oil, uh, with diesel. We're flying in diesel. So I think we've got a lot to do in our own country, let alone the obvious benefit to our to our allies. Um, and I just want to go back for a sec on that announcement and the visit from the German Chancellor here. Uh, and uh, he came to Newfoundland. Right. Any Newfoundlander could have told you that it's about time they start generating energy from the wind on that island because it's uh, it's unreal. Um and maybe they only haven't done it because it would blow the turbines right off of the rock. I don't know. But it is, in my view, a consistent, clean energy source that should have been tapped a long time ago. And I'm delighted to see that they would be moving on that. Um, and if low cost energy that is also green can help the, the creation of new energy sources, the potential of growth for hydrogen, for example, then I'm all for it. And you're putting it in a place that, frankly, could use more industry and more opportunity. Joe Oliver, what's your take on it? Well, for a second, I thought music uh, was uh, was uh, playing in the background because what uh, Sandra was saying was music to my ears. We, we definitely have to, and I agree completely, um, export our, our fossil fuels, particularly uh, gas, which has half the um, the GHG emissions uh, the, than coal does and 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 uh, oil also has has less I don't know if it's twenty or thirty percent uh, less so we could do a lot to reduce net global emissions which is the only relevant ma uh, measure it's not Canada's scorecard it's the global a scorecard which which determines uh, whether we can uh, we we can deal with uh, with with climate issues, and uh, in the meantime, uh, there's there's profound implications for for jobs, for economic growth, uh, for for indigenous uh, communities, all of whom along the lines of the, of the pipelines uh, that were proposed are were in favor actually of, of developing it. Um, and then we, we talked about energy security and helping uh, helping our allies and, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, the advantages uh, to the environment of, of doing that. So, um, you know, I'm hoping uh, that that one of the benefits, uh, one of the few benefits out of this uh, energy crisis that we're seeing in, in Europe and elsewhere in the world uh, will wake uh, people up, as I think it already they already are being awakened uh, by by the need to get back to to reality i mean gas in particular is 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 a perfect transition uh, uh fuel and you know the thing about wind and solar as we know they're intermittent the uh, the sun doesn't always shine the wind doesn't always blow and you need backup and uh, the backup is is provided by, by if i can finish the backup not, is, is not provided. If I can finish, here. I guess I can't. Sorry, Sandra, were you, what, what was your point? Yeah, just it's never intermittent wind in Newfoundland. That's oh, okay. Yes, it's, it's a windy. It's a windy province. That's that's fair. Right.
Yeah, it's, it's windy. But um, the the point is, you you need uh, you know, if storage were 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 adequate to do the job, that would be great. It, it isn't there yet, or or, or even close. Um, someday it, it it might be. We hope. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, gas provides that uh, that backup, or as they say in the, in the business, uh, the capacity uh, that's needed to keep the lights on and the heat. Uh, the heat or air conditioning uh, operating, uh, you know, so, you know, that, that's, that's reality. And, and uh, Canada can be a, an enormous help to, to, to the world and to itself if we sort of start getting real. Sandra, we got about 30 seconds before the break. Any other thought on this topic? No, just that I think we should put some emphasis on our American allies mm. because that, you know, the more energy prices are going through the roof, or again, are unstable, the more they should be relying on their partners who are actually their friends, and that is namely Canada. Uh, so the grief that we see around the pipelines uh, with the new administration in the U.S., uh, I think that's really difficult. It's a difficult decision for them to make um, because they're goring their own ox, if you will. And I think, <laughs> I think uh, you know, we could help them. So, yeah, Joe, my vehement agreement uh, mark your calendar because that. Yeah, that, and I, I am marking my calendar. We're going to take a brief break. We'll be back with our guests. Please stay with us. We're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement. Uh, final segment with the Honorable Joe Oliver and Sandra Pupatello as we discuss these economic issues. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about we've got two kind of elections going on right now the Alberta leadership. Uh, vote uh, within the, Alber the United Conservative Party of Alberta for a successor to Jason Kenney. And we also have a general election taking place in the province of Quebec, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, non-Quebecers should be mindful of. It's an important province with an important election. Uh, Sandra, we'll start with you. Any thoughts on either of those two uh, races going on? Well, just that I thought overall, uh, I mean, I'm not obviously supportive of Legault's party, but I thought that they came out of the pandemic in a very positive fashion. And he seemed to be holding his own throughout the pandemic. And uh, the people of Quebec, it seems that they, or, or at least if we're looking at elections generally during the pandemic or as we come out of it, they're just maintaining status quo in terms of their representation. So I was sort of expecting there weren't going to be a lot of fireworks in Quebec other than who gets to be second place um, because there, there just hasn't been anything radical that uh, Legault has been doing. I mean, a couple of things on language that bother me as an Ontario resident. Um, but in the main, uh, he's pro-business. They are very aggressive on the international front. All the things that I see are actually very positive. Um, so my, my larger concern, frankly, is what's happening in Alberta, because it seems like uh, if Danielle uh, has her way with her, her notions about these new clauses that they want to bring in as law, it's almost like they're just going to go off the cliff. And I, I you know, I want them to sort of stay the course with a little bit of centrist activity in Alberta. Uh, Joe Oliver, Quebec and Alberta, any any thoughts about those two provinces? Sure. Look, I, I think uh, some of the, the points that, that uh, uh, Sandra made uh, account for the popularity, including, unfortunately, the language uh, law. I mean, it's not that we're Ontarians that, that we should be concerned about the law, but rather that uh, uh, that the English minority is being uh, is being deprived of some of their rights, but that's probably a uh, a political advantage uh, to the party. The one thing I do find a bit puzzling there um, is is on on the pandemic response. I mean, Sanders said that he, he did well. Well, he appeared to do well, but if you look at the numbers, he did he did badly. They they did a lot worse than uh, than Ontario and, and and other provinces. And and quite frankly, if if the numbers had been reversed, I think it would have been a real political problem for uh, uh, you know for Doug Ford. And so I, I can't quite explain that. But in terms of in terms of Alberta, what we're, what we're seeing. Um, really, is the is is the result of of federal hostility uh, to uh, to Alberta and its 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 critical uh, industry, uh, and uh, a frustration that's been building for 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 many decades as uh, as a result of what they perceive, and frankly, I agree with them, uh, the unfairness 
uh, that they've been uh, accorded to in in confederation. They've been treated like a uh, um, you know a, a, a fat cow to be exploited, and um, and uh, we've there's a government that, that's hostile to to their interests at any time they can, and in huge double standards about uh, which pipelines uh, you, you know energy depending on whether it, it impacts Alberta or whether it impacts Ontario and and. Uh, uh, and Quebec, like Line Five, where there was hysteria in the air uh, and unanimity uh, amongst the uh, the chattering class and the in the Laurentian elite. But uh, you know, anything that that deals with Alberta didn't uh, you know doesn't get the same uh, attention. And um, you know, they they feel they've been dealt with uh, with with some uh, disdain. And it's it's producing the kind of a, a, a election we're seeing. And I'm you know I'm concerned. Uh, about Danielle Smith uh, uh, Sovereignty Act, but um, I understand what's uh, you know what, what's behind it. I think criticism of it is a bit overwrought, frankly. Um, you, you know, but uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, people in Canada have always dismissed the possibility of of Alberta uh, separation as being totally far fetched and, and, and absurd. Uh, but I don't think it's as far fetched as, mm. as as people think. We're going to have to leave it at that. Yeah. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. We're going to have to leave it at that. We are out of time, but I want to thank our guest, Joe Oliver, Sandra Pupatello for joining us again. Hopefully Gary Marr will be back next month, but uh, keep well. Thanks for joining us today. Interesting discussion there with Joe Oliver, Sandra Pupatello about the economic uh, situation that we find ourselves in uh, and whether we can be part of the solution for uh, some of the crisis in Europe as well. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching today.